can you still compare a base Corvette to a Porsche Carrera? I had a few laps of Chuck Waller racetrack last year to find out. Not a full test, more a chance to drive them back to back and take a few shots. I'm sorry for the poor audio, I cocked up with the microphone, that was my fault. The Porsche is a $100,000, 400 horsepower icon of self-aggrandisement, whereas the Corvette has become the ultimate performance bargain. This C7 Stingray may have an auto transmission, but it's a 460 horsepower thug that costs just $60,000, which is a nice round number because it also happens to be the same amount as the optional extras fitted to this particular Carrera S. And no, I'm not kidding. So we had a little play on the track to see what the differences were, what was good and what was bad. Okay, people, you know the form by now. Corvette C7. I've waited to drive one for a long time. We're at Chuck Waller. What a beautiful place for an Englishman to come and visit. Let's do a couple of laps in this car. Let's do the first one straight. No oversteer. I've got the traction control off. It's an automatic gearbox, six speeds, braking into turn one. Brake pedal's good. Brake pedal's nice and firm, but they don't feel like they hold out forever. The car is neutral but it's got quite a bit of oversteer. It wants to oversteer on the turn in and it wants to oversteer on the exit but that means the front of the car is very pointy. You turn, it goes. Oof, blimey. Engine, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Makes loads of noise, very responsive and keeps going to about six as well. Gearbox, pretty terrible if I'm honest with you. Six speed automatic that's sort of doing manual shifts if you want them and will do a blip on the downshift, but it's slow and cumbersome compared to the Porsche. But just get a manual, get a stick. I don't see why you'd buy one of these with this gearbox. I don't know why they gave it to us with this gearbox, but there we go. Can't have it all, can you? One thing I will say, it's fast. It's really fast. Get a load of that. 118 breaking into that corner. That's quite quick. You have to just manage the oversteer in the car. It's fascinating. If you just get too much gas on, it's there, gone, like that, straight away. So that means it feels a bit nervous. To me, the damper modes are a bit funny because I'm, in, I'm, not, in the, I'm not even in the stiffest mode at the moment and the car feels over stiff for this circuit. This is quite flat track, so where you will use the super flat mode, I don't know. Maybe on a billiard table or something because I wouldn't use it. But I keep coming back to this one point with the Corvette. What else could you have for the money? What else? And what more could you expect for this amount of money? This car is over 190 miles an hour. It's a hell of a value proposition. A hell of a value proposition. Okay, let's try it a little bit more aggressively, eh? do that all day long. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. It feels quite tight to me. It's those little squirrely ones it does on the exit of corners that are probably less enjoyable because to me it feels like the rear axle location isn't absolutely bang on but then this is the base car. No doubt when they do the faster ones, faster than this, then they might locate the axle a little better. It just feels a bit loose on the exit of turns. But the mechanical grip is good and of course with that throttle response, you can just kind of pick your angle, really. I'm a fan, boys. I'm a fan. Everyone reckons I'm too negative about these cars, but I just think for the money... Tagline, the Corvette, it's f***ing brilliant fun. You know what? I wonder whether it's even fair comparing the Corvette to the 911. I suppose we're doing it because there's always been this kind of Corvette versus 911 grudge match, but the price difference is so great now. Matt Farah rightly pointed out earlier the cost of the Corvette roughly equates to the extras fitted to this car. 
The 991 has become a very expensive machine. It's rather good though. So this is a Carrera S with all sorts of toys on it. In terms of chassis, well, I'm in stiff damper mode, I've got the exhaust on loud because I'm a yob, and I've got the throttle in sport and I've turned the traction control off for the moment. What are the main differences? Well, to start with, there's a sophistication to this chassis that's immediately showing that isn't there in the Corvette. The body shell feels a little bit stiffer to me, and it just rides every little bump in a more composed manner. I put it this way, every bump that the Porsche hits, it deals with in one damping stroke and the car carries on. In the Corvette, you get the feeling it needs to have a second go at coping with what's happening, and that naturally makes the car feel a little, a little more nervous. There's a lot of mechanical grip in this Porsche. Well, it doesn't have sticky tyres, but it really grips. Traction, of course, is sensational because it's a Porsche and the engine's out the back. And that engine, a bit more linear and it wants to rev out. When you get it above seven, good Lord, it's special. We all go on about how wonderful the GT3 is, but we forget that this base Carrera engine is a thing of joy, it really is. Steering, electric, a bit lifeless at lower speeds, but strangely on a track, I don't really worry too much about the electric steering. It's less of a concern for me. But boy, it's a very, very competent car. And it's very enjoyable too. That engine, transmission, okay, a totally different league to the, uh, to the GM automatic thing. This is a, a really clever transmission. And because I don't especially like the, um, the manual seven speed, that this PDK thing is, I think, a bit of an improvement. Fast those shifts are. can ride the curbs as well. The exit phase of the corner is very interesting because the Porsche just hunkers down and goes and finds traction where the vet has that sort of oversteery moment. Yeah, no word of a lie, I much prefer driving this car. I think it's more sophisticated, I prefer the engine, I prefer the gearbox, I think it handles better. But the price difference, as I said, I'm not sure this is even a comparison. The price is crazy on the Porsche. So, what's the Porsche like when you let it move around a bit? Everyone goes on about how the Porsche is all wrong in terms of its weight distribution, but why does it feel so right when you put it into a corner? Tell me that. You put it into a corner like that, and it just feels profoundly right. It feels like the mass is in the right place. And once you've got it sitting on the back axle, powering out of a corner sideways, I'm not sure there's any handling trait of any car for me that feels more right than that. So much balance. It just feels like someone's done millions of miles developing it and making it perfect, which of course they have. And of course, in exchange for all that work, they want lots of money. This is just a Carrera S. good at all of it. It really is a fantastic motor car. I did drive both on the road and the same positives and negatives emerged, but I will say that the Stingray's firm suspension is less of a problem on the street than I'd feared. It's a massively entertaining car for the money. In fact, it's pretty pointless testing it against anything else because it offers so much for so little. Yes, the Porsche does things it cannot do. Yes, it's the better, more desirable car. But for that much money, so it bloody well should be.